everyone, and welcome to Life Questions. I'm Bill Harris. If you have questions about life, you've tuned to the right program. Our country has suffered so much this past year, but it is important for us to understand that God will be with us in our future. These are uncertain times, but the Lord has promised to be with us as we go through difficult times. And when we have questions and concerns about life, we are encouraged to seek him for answers. And so we've invited a few ministers to talk with us about life in today's world with a 21st century insight from the Word of God. And I want you to meet these fine gentlemen. First, we have uh, Pastor Ted Bible of the St. Mark's United Methodist Church here in Lima, Ohio, followed by Pastor Brandon Green of the Celebration Church of Lima. Then there is Pastor Jason Goss of the Wapak Church of Wapakoneta, and Pastor John Maynard of the Family of Faith United Methodist Church also pastors the Liberty Chapel Church, both of which are in Lima, Ohio. Gentlemen, we're happy to have you all with us. You know, we had you last week. We had a very interesting discussion. And as we continue this, uh, I'd like to pick up where we left off. We got a question that came in from a lady, and I, I think she sums up what a lot of people feel right now. She says... Um, if I could talk to God right now, I would ask him to explain why he is allowing us to go through this virus. Uh, we thought it would be over last summer. Now I see no end to it. I mean, we've got one variant after another, one virus after another coming up. When, you know, I mean, you all are not scientists. I mean, so I, I can't ask you specifically, when's this going to be over? But how do we deal with this? I mean, it's trial after trial after trial. Give us some encouragement, gentlemen. I believe that God is love, mm -hmm. and because He is love, He just doesn't have love. Love has to have a receiver, and so when God created um, mankind, He did with the express purpose of giving us a willful choice, to which men rejected the ordinance of God and ultimately um, brought about sin consequences, mm -hmm. long-range sin consequences, oh, yeah. into the earth. And so for God to violate the will of man, that would be abuse. Mm -hmm. God is not abusive. And so the fact is we have to remember that this is a fallen world. This old world is in travail. And that because life can be beautiful, it, it's got ups and it's also got downs. Yes. But he's given us another life. And we have the hope of restoration. And, and what I really do believe is things, painful things, can either happen to you or they can happen for you. What I mean by that is the Word of God promised that no, and all these things will work together. I'm a cancer survivor. I know what is I'm talking right? about. Oh, yeah. They work together for good? Is for the says? good. Yeah. You know, when I look at Joseph's story, he said, you meant it for evil against yeah. me, all, all of the treachery, but yeah, yeah. God meant it for the good and for the saving of the nation. So there were so many people that were saved through Joseph's testimony and, and through his trial. So things can either happen to you or they can happen for you. And it's yeah. really about your attitude. Yeah. And, and sticking through it all the way through so you can see the good that eventually comes behind the bad. Huh? Right. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And you've got the idea, hey, God, his ways are not my ways. Mm -hmm. What I would say, hey, God, you should do it this way. That's not the way that God thinks. Mm -hmm. And so God works through those difficult situations. Mm -hmm. And we've already seen things like the earth has healed. We've seen cities that, hey, pollution's down. There's been some benefits that have come. So good has happened. At the same time, some of us have had a chance to kind of reflect and think, you know what, maybe I do need to focus on some different things. So good can come from these things. It may not be what the way I thought it should happen, but that doesn't mean that God isn't still working. It also doesn't mean that um, just because you can't see the good that may come, right. doesn't mean it won't come, because <laughs> it, it probably will, because God is God. Right. Well, it's good. you know, the Bible tells us that we will have trials and tribulations as we go through this valley of shadow of death. We're not alone. He's still with us. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you come out on the other side. You, you come out either kind of broken or you come out healed. And sometimes it takes some kind of devastation to make you turn to God and ask for healing. And, and that, that's what's so important is that we, we don't look at it as always being negative. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time we've had a pandemic. Mm -hmm. We've had right. them before, right. and we made it through. Sure. And it's going to happen 
somewhere, you know, 10 years down the road, 100 years down the road. I mean, who knows? But the thing we need to remember is God is with us through all of this. You know, the other, the other day, this weekend, when uh, they, the, the, after the carpenter, uh, carpenters had installed the carpet in our home, uh, we had to start putting everything back the way it, the way it was over the new carpet and the like. And I thought about how that in life, sometimes before a thing can get better, it has to get worse. Yes. Right. And when they were putting that carpeting in, we had to move all that furniture around, put stuff in the garage, you know, everything got worse. But now with the new carpeting and the like, as we put things back in place, it's getting better. Forest fire happens, it's tragic, it destroys the area, but then things grow back healthy mm -hmm. and good. So sometimes it's needed, sadly. Yeah, yeah. Well, and just like it's been a worldwide pandemic, meaning that it's impacted the entire world, mm -hmm. this guy right here had his own pandemic sure. dealing with cancer. Yeah. Right. You know, you think back, you know, people thought the end of the world was coming during our, our civil war. Yeah. You know, yes. you think back a yeah. hundred years ago, yeah. right? Yeah. They, there was the Spanish flu pandemic, mm -hmm. World sure. War I, followed by the Depression. Yeah, <laughs> the Black Plague. Yeah. 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 yeah, so, I mean, there was so much going on then. And we've survived through that. Now, hopefully, we can all grow through these things right. and, and learn to rely upon God more to guide us and direct us. But many of those issues, many of those challenges go far beyond the, well, we've been in 11 months now, right? Yeah. 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 Many of those issues go well beyond 11 months. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, and so we just need to, you know, find strength in one another. Right, you know, to in order to be able to survive and work through these difficult challenges. You remind me of a cartoon that I saw that was related to. I inter remind you of a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> There's a compliment in there someplace, I'm sure. <laughs> Must be Yogi Bear. Yeah. No, it's, you know, it was a cartoon that was focusing on inner peace. You know, regardless yeah. of what happens, and this this young lady, she's got her hands up and she's got her eyes closed, and she's saying, "All right, inner peace, come on, I haven't got all day." Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. It's a conscious uh, choice to grow through it, like you know you were alluding to, and we really do need to have a Christian perspective of suffering and a Christian perspective of death. Hmm. If you do die, Paul says it's better that I go. You yeah, know, right. for me it would be far better. But I'm going to stay here to help you all yeah. here for a time. Yeah. But you know, a a Christian who goes to eternity. It is not a punishment to go to heaven. No. <laughs> a, new, a new beginning. The yeah. same thing with suffering. He says, if you suffer with me, mm -hmm. you'll reign with me. So we like that aspect, but you know, in order to have a good resurrection, you've got to have a good crucifixion. Oh. And that's yes. uncomfortable. Oh, my Lord, yes. You know, my, my aunt was dying of cancer, but before she got real, real sick, she once started coming to church. And it, it got to the point where she couldn't get out of bed but she wanted to go back home to where she was born to be baptized. Well, when she got baptized, she came up shouting, rejoicing, and walked back up the hill and stayed up the rest of the night talking about her Lord and Savior. And then we got a phone call that the time was near. And we went over to her house, and, and I, I was about 14. I can remember her telling her husband that she didn't want the oxygen mass anymore. And she raised her hands and started praising God. Right and uh, she slowly brought her hands down and she was gone but she had to smile mm -hmm. my goodness what a story, what a story. Mm -hmm. well here's, a, here's another letter that came in it asks where is God I've been a believer my entire life but after a year of struggling through COVID and work related issues I have been asking God to show up and I am not and I am seeing nothing mm -hmm. I am starting to question if God really is who I have always believed him to be. He's showing I mean, up. We, I mean, he's we, all around you. Yeah. I mean, all, all you have to do is, is, is look. And, 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 you know, sit down, pray, and ask God to open up your eyes and look around you. Look, look at your kids if you have kids. Those are miracles right there. Mm -hmm. look, look at the painting that he has given you on this morning. You know, there, there's so many things out there that shows that God's alive and well, and He's in your presence. You know, Job said that he fenced up his way. God did that. Mm -hmm. He said he set darkness in my path. And so often the question is, what do you do when the lights go out? Well, you know, just like if the, you know, 
a thunderstorm hits your house, you know, the lights are cut off, you're going to go by memory. Yeah. And a lot of this is just yes. walking by your memory. You know, you can get through, you can navigate through your house by memory. And while you do, you know, there's such a principle in the Word of God, remembering will build strength. Remembering what the Lord has done in the past, it, it, it creates, it's almost like a catalytic um, opportunity for Him to do it again. You know, at what he's done before, he can do this again. And at the same time, you have to remind yourself that the teacher's often silent in the middle of the test because he trusts you with the trial. He trusts you with the trouble. And there is promotion on the other side of what you're dealing with. So is it because God's being unfair towards you or is it because God trusts you that you're going to praise him anyway? Mm. And and we often want to see the answer at the end. We want God, show me the answer. We're... The, the psalmist writes, be a light unto my feet. Mm-hmm. I just need to know the next step. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to be faithful in the next step. Mm-hmm. We want God, hey, I, I want God to benefit me. I want God to bless me. Understand that that blessing means obedience. And mm-hmm. sometimes that obedience means I have to walk through the storm. <gasps> I have to walk mm-hmm. through the trial. And that means I have to be faithful here now, knowing that the blessing is on the other side. Okay. And so I think one of the applications, whether it be for this individual who wrote the question or for somebody else's, is that they need to they need to reach out to other people. They need to be, you know, if they can't get out physically to go someplace and, and visit somebody, they need to be on the phone, finding out how they're doing. They, yeah. they, they need to be yeah. the light for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think when you begin doing that, mm-hmm. you begin seeing where God is, in fact, working. Mm-hmm. God might be waiting for the individual to step up so he can work through that person. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, or maybe that maybe there's somebody out there that God's willing to work through to, to, to strengthen her. You know, so I think that's part of it. We, we, we can't just be confined, mm-hmm. even though we're kind of told we need to be confined. We can't right. be confined. We need to find a way to, to reach out, to get in touch with people, to talk with them, it's encourage a, it's them. It's an illustration of the water. You know, if you have no outlet, it, you, you become stagnant. You become yes. stale, dead yeah. sea. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. if you are flowing and you're giving, then that allows the freshness of God to come into your life. The mm-hmm. Bible says it's better to give than receive. Right. So I believe in fully sowing into your need. If you're needy, if you're depressed, go and invest yourself into somebody else. Call about somebody else's problem. Pray with them. All of a sudden, you're going to feel like the atmosphere lifts wherever you're at, and you're going to start feeling better. Get plugged into church, whether in person or virtual. Do something to connect with the body of Christ, because every joint supplies life. When you need love, give love. And Mm -hmm. so many times, I, I, I have gone to the hospital to pray with someone, and I've come out blessed. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, it's just amazing. Sure. And well, turn off the news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's depression. You sound just like my daughter. Okay, well, listen, we're going to come back in a few seconds. We're going to take a break. But when we come back, we'd like to talk about fear, how people are dealing with fear in this day and time. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back with our panel, and uh, we want to turn our attention to fear, how people are dealing with their fears during uh, COVID-19. This is a question that came in. I know we are not supposed to fear, but everything that has happened this year has left me so fearful. Can you offer Bible verses to help me fight these fears? What sayest thou, gentlemen? I think you also have to define what kind of fear you're dealing with. So for me, I believe there's three aspects of fear. There's the spirit of fear, which is demonic, yep. and you can take authority over that. There is the stronghold of fear in one's mind to which anxiety uh, you know, flows out of and things of that nature, which means you need to reprogram your mind with the Word of God, which I had to do that myself, you know, being healed from anxiety as well. And then uh, lastly, you're going to have to look at situations that are kind of scary and frame it with, it's a concern. 
You don't have to say, you know, I, I, I'm so condemned because I'm afraid. What person wouldn't be afraid if they step out and start a new business, especially in this economy? What person wouldn't be afraid, you know, they're going to the grocery store and they have an aged, you know, parent and they could possibly. So we can frame that in concern. But when it comes to it, you can fight your fears with the word of God, which you, you, you have to get it down into your spirit, man. I love some of these like First John 4, 18. Perfect love drives out fear because that fear is tormenting. I also love Isaiah 41.10. It says, don't fear because the Lord's with you. He'll strengthen you and he'll uphold you with his mighty right hand. And so what I know is this, when you're stepping out on something, uh, if you're starting something new, putting yourself, maybe you're going on a date and you haven't dated in so, such a long time, <laughs> feel the fear, but don't let it control you. Okay. Go, go to the Gospels and you, and you look at the disciples are on the boat. Jesus is with them and he's sleeping below the boat. Yeah. Storm kicks up and it says the disciples were afraid. And if you think about it, they're fishermen. They're used to this. This isn't something that like, it's not like, so for them, they're in a full blow panic. And what's Jesus doing? He's sleeping. Yeah. And I was reminded um, early when the COVID started, this, this pandemic did not take Jesus by surprise. Mm -mm. This did not shock him. This does not scare him. And so if my faith is grounded in him, mm -hmm. if he's not afraid, I have nothing to be afraid of because he is with me. Now, I, I may have a sense of uh, lack of control. I don't know where things going, but that's okay because Christ is with me. And so that can ground me in my faith knowing it's okay because God's got this. And that's where a lot of the fear comes from, doesn't it? The mm -hmm. fact that you don't, you're not in control. You right. can't. You, you can't change the circumstances. Control is elusive. Well, Very yeah. much so. We don't like yeah. to not be in control. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't. Yeah. Very good. Well, the first thing is we, we cannot live in fear, but we have to be cautious. Mm -hmm. Can and, you and explain the difference between the two? Can you explain the difference between well, the two? Well, you know, to live in fear means, means you're afraid to step out, afraid to do anything. But it's okay if you, if you do it and be cautious about it. I mean, right now we, we need to wear a mask and we need to keep her social distance, but you can still get out. Mm -hmm. You can right. still see people, still elbow people. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not like we are condemned to be in our houses. We can get out if you, if you just do it cautiously. And I really like uh, about the fear is Psalms 23, 4. It says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He, he is with you through all of this. And that's what we need to do is open up our Bibles, pray. Let me put this fear behind me. But let me you know, move being cautious. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, well, let's go to a, another question here. Um, this one is from a viewer that says, I have noticed that I am more angry now than I was before. <laughs> Isn't that something? I snap back at people more quickly. Everything surrounding the virus is starting to take its toll. Now, you may want to debate as to whether or not she's blaming it on the virus or not. I am worried about my mental health and the mental health of others. What would you say to help this person? Well, I I mean, one of my concerns, that, and it goes back a few months ago now, is that there was so much, and rightfully so, so much concern over one's physical health, not getting COVID, right. mm -hmm. that we avoided the other kinds of concerns, mental health concerns, mm -hmm. you know, the anxiety this person's feeling, addictions, everybody in addictions who can't go to their group meetings, we forgot about that. That wasn't important. We need people to be isolated. We, we, we didn't. We weren't concerned about the other aspect. Well, now that's mm -hmm. cre creeping up, yeah. and it's catching up to people. And, and, and it's you know. So we need to we need to deal with that. We need to be as pastors. We need to be be available to encourage people to find right. avenues for them to to be in contact with either us or our brothers and sisters in Christ who are in our church. You know, to reach out and encourage them. Uh, we we need to. Obviously, wait for better times to go outside and walk and, and be out and get fresh air and see God's great creation. But that is a, that's a legitimate concern mm -hmm. about We've that. bought into the lie that God's stoic, and he's not. He's a feeling God. He has a, 
wide range of emotions. They're all throughout the Word of God. And so anger is not a primary emotion. It is a secondary emotion to which grief is really what's going on. And we have it in this, we're, we're so emotionally constipated in this country. We tell our little boys, you know, you know, you can't cry, you know. And we tell her, just, you know, toughen up. Don't, don't look at it. And, you know, David found such solace going into the presence of the king, mm-hmm. laying out his complaint. Think about how gracious God is to hear that complaint. Yeah. And so as he poured out his heart, all of a sudden he, he shifted that burden and he received something else. And so I believe it can be very cathartic, it's very healing. Uh, we need to empower people. You need to grieve in a proper space. Yeah. You need to see a counselor. I advocate for counselor. I don't feel like lead pastors should be counseling people. Is that we, right? I, I don't. I believe that we should be leading the church. And that I, I feel like I'm your family doctor. I can, you know, assess general needs. But you don't want me operating in, you know, if I'm a fam, family doctor right there in my office. So, you know, take that concern to a professional counselor get healing, and get over it. Move forward through it. Yeah, let me illustrate it this way. Uh, you drive a car. Mm-hmm. How often do you uh, put gas in your car? All the time. Probably once a week, at least yeah. for most people, depending on the drive. How often do you change your oil? Another. You're supposed to change your oil every three months. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. You're yeah, supposed to. Personally. How often do you, you get a tune-up or, or your tires aligned or change your tires? We all, all that, you know, it's a normal thing. Life that. is the same way. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you need to go see a counselor. It's okay. We we put this negative stigma. Well, if I mm-hmm. talk to somebody about my feelings, then something's wrong with me. Yep. Yeah. I will always advocate no. Yeah. When you talk to somebody, yeah. what you're doing is I can I can fix a, an oil change. I can do that. But if you don't fix an oil change, guess what happens? You ruin your car. You ruin your engine. And so yeah. if you don't do these tune-ups in your life, in your relationships, with those kind of things, what will happen is you'll end up destroying everything, and then now you're trying to put it all back together. And too many family doctors are prescribing medication yes. where it, you know you need to get to the root of the issue. And so I, I, I fully advocate go see you know a Christian psychologist, a counselor, you know take care of what's going on within your heart because that's where all the issues of life are flowing out of. Okay. Right. And, 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 and right now, I mean we're, we're telling people they need to isolate and you're striking out against your loved ones because they're the closest to you. Mm-hmm. But but we but we need not to strike out. We need to make sure that we show love there, and that we we might have to, you know, step back and do a few things differently. We might have to start watching TV with our kids. We might have to sit down and open up the Bible and read to the kids, read to them at night. Anything to get through this. Just don't let this fear take you to that point. Where, where you're striking out against people. In the remaining time we've got, I'd like to change the subject. This is another interesting question that came in from a viewer. Studies indicate that 65% of Christian colleges, of Christian college students, pardon me, will leave their faith by the end of four years if they choose to attend a public college. Studies sadly aren't much better for students who attend Christian colleges. What can we be doing to build a strong faith based on uh, based, a strong faith based foundation in our youngsters? And what can we do to support college students who are questioning and ultimately walking away from their faith or from their beliefs? The, the biggest struggle is I'm working on a master's degree in, in apologetics. OK. And the biggest struggle is we have not prepared people to have the arguments and the discussions that the world is throwing at them. So you need to be able to have these conversations with your kids before they leave for college. You need yes. to start really when they're in high school. Mm-hmm. And they need to understand, you know, uh, you can't just say because the Bible said so. That's a good answer, yeah. but it can't be the only answer. You need to begin to help them understand um, their worldview, understand what these big questions that people have so that they can uh, understand a way and they know how to articulate, well, this is not just what the Bible says, but what makes practical sense? How do I logically think through things? Um, have that conversation early, not late. I've seen, uh, I saw in the news that there are some communities that have places where students can go to learn mm-hmm. and be trained and educated on how to defend their faith while in high school before they go off to college. 
Absolute was, truth is really uh, at, at the stake here. Yeah. It, you know, but at the same time, if you look at what we did uh, 20, 30 years ago, when we switched the way that we did uh, junior church and Sunday school, so now we put our kids in nursery, then naturally they go into kids' church, then they move into a youth program, and then once they leave uh, and they go off to college, they never had a connection with the adult service. Mm -hmm. So we put them at the kids' table, and so what I like to say is, let our kids serve now. Yes. They can help now. Let them have buy-in. Yes. Listen to what they're saying. You know, don't create a space where it's just, well, they're just living in our world as adults, and one day they'll get it. No, if we really want to reach this generation, we've got to make them feel that they are important, they matter, and they have a point of view. Yeah. You know, I totally uh, agree with that, and, and, and I'd like to take it a little bit further. You know, bring them when they're infants. Let them hear the music. Let them hear the singing. Let them hear the praying. Let them listen to the sermon. Yeah, I, I, I know they're only a couple months old, but as you take them through their ages, they, they get into that, and they want it. And I was reading uh, an issue on kids now want to come back to the basics. They want to know the hardcore word. And maybe they're not getting that in college now. Yeah. You know, I just think that the, the church, we have so much that we compete against. You know, athletes who have a voice, mm -hmm. entertainment who has a voice. TikTok people who have voices, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Snapchat, all that kind of thing. And, you know, and so sometimes our voice just isn't heard, you know, or it, it's not glamorous, you know, because we're not a celebrity, mm -hmm. you know. And so uh, we, we just need to find a way to, to better connect with people. And they are, but it's about building the foundation. You know, people are going to drift. That's going to happen. They're yes. going to drift it whether they're going to college or whether they yeah, get out sure. into the working world and move away to someplace else or whether they're in their 60s or midlife crises, mm -hmm. whatever it is, people are going to drift. But how strong is their foundation? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and is the church willing and able to come back and greet them? The other thing I would point out is, is that it's going to be really hard to get kids excited about staying, you know, in the faith when the faith is fighting against one another. Mm -hmm. When yeah, the church is yeah. fighting against the church, when the church is fighting against other people, you know, uh, being disrespectful, mm -hmm. not sharing the love. Yeah. Going back to what our earlier conversations, yeah. you know, if we're not showing the love, then it's really hard for people to want to be connected to something. It's and, not like it that. also goes to the parents. Uh, many parents, uh, and I've seen over the years, that they have a greater commitment for their kids and their sports program than they do for their kids and their theology. How so? Uh, Can you yeah, just that uh, well, so, uh, you know, my kids, they practice every day and they're, they're, you know, every day is a scheduled practice Then they got games once a week. <clears throat> well, then how often do you show up to church? Well, Sunday's the only day we can sleep in or, or my kids got a game on Sunday, so we can't make it to church. We, we spend more time, we put more energy in everything else when really the eternal security, the eternal commitment of my child is the most important thing on the agenda. But that always seems to take a back seat to everything else my child does. Jesus said, uh, or the Word of God says, train up a child in the way that they should go. It doesn't right. say that when they're old that they're not going to depart from church. Yeah. It means it's going to stick with them when they're old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to have to leave it at that. We're all out of time. Thank you very much. Some good answers to some very important questions that came in this week. We want to thank you for joining us today, and we'll be back again next week at the same time. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Bye-bye. Have a good day. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, 
Share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at wtlw.com. <laughs>